We are counting down the top 10 greatest seasons from a player that did a win the MVP award. Some of the players lost it to more deserving players, and some of them, well, were just plain inexcusable. That's how staggering some of the numbers that these players put up. Now before we get onto the list, there are a few stipulations that we need to address. First thing is that the players had to at least make the playoffs. So that means Wilt's 1963 season, where he averaged 44 points per game, and Tiny Archibald's season, where he led the league in points and assists in 1973, are disqualified. I also want to take into consideration the number of games they played in the season. They had to have played at least 75% of the season. We're talking a minimum of 60 games played. So that means Elgin Baylor's 1962 season is disqualified as well, since he only played 48 games that year. Keep in mind that I'm not talking about which was the biggest MVP snub. I did a similar video talking about that in the past, and I have the link there at the top of your screen for you all to enjoy. But instead, I'm talking about the player that had the greatest statistical season, but still lost the MVP award to another player. With that out the way, let's start with the number 10 spot, Dwayne Wade in 2009. Here are the numbers that he put up that season. He averaged 30.2 points per game on 49.1% shooting, 7.5 assists per game, 5 rebounds per game, 2.2 steals per game, and 1.3 blocks per game. He led the league in scoring that year. Here are some of the records that he broke. He posted a 9.6 Valley Over Replacement Player rating, which is tied for the 15th highest in league history for a single season. Only Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Kevin Garnett, David Robinson, and Chris Paul had a higher value over replacement player rating for a season. He also posted a 10.6 box plus minus, which is currently the 19th highest in league history. And to showcase how tremendous of an all-around player he was, he became the only player to finish the season with at least 2,000 points, 500 assists, 100 steals, and 100 blocks in a season. There were also three games where he scored over 50 points, including one game where he nearly posted a 50-point triple-double in a triple overtime victory against the Utah Jazz. He led his team to the playoffs without anyone else averaging over 15 points per game. In fact, their second leading scorer, Michael Beasley, came off the bench for the majority of the season. In the majority of the cases, Wade would have been the runaway to winning the MVP award, but LeBron James was somehow able to top that. Number 9, we have James Harden in 2019. Here are the numbers that he put up that season. He averaged 36.1 points per game on 44.2% shooting, 7.5 assists per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds per game, and 2 steals per game. He led the league in scoring and that is currently the 8th highest scoring average in league history. Only Wilt Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, and Elgin Baylor have been able to average over 36 points per game for a single season. James Harden had 9 total games where he scored over 50 points. That is including 2 games where he scored over 60 points and 2 games where he posted a 50 point triple double. It was truly one of the greatest scoring seasons in modern day history. But it wasn't just his scoring that made this an historic season. He had an offensive box plus minus of 9.4, which is currently the fourth highest for a single season. He had a value over replacement player rating of 9.3, which is currently the 18th highest for a single season. And he had a box plus minus of 11.0, which is currently the 16th highest for a single season. He lost the MVP to Giannis that season who also had a pretty historic year himself. They weren't as staggering, but the Milwaukee Bucks won 60 games that season compared to the 53 that the Rockets won. James Harden might not have been the most valuable player that season, but the best player in the world title? He had a pretty intriguing case. Number 8. We have Kobe Bryant in 2006. We go to another incredible scoring season. Here are the numbers he put up. He averaged 35.4 points per game on 45% shooting, 5.3 rebounds per game, and 4.5 assists per game. 
That is currently the 10th highest average for a single season in history. He had six games where he scored over 50 points, including his legendary 81 point game, which is one of the most impressive scoring performances that we've ever seen. And what's even crazier about that season from Kobe is that he scored 62 points in three quarters while also outscoring the Dallas Mavericks by himself. May I remind you that this was the same team that reached the finals that season. Kobe had to score this many points out of necessity, but I'm sure he didn't mind taking all the shots that he wanted. He had to carry a talentless squad with no one else averaging over 15 points per game. When your starting lineup consists of Smush Parker, Kwame Brown, and Brian Cook, then you shouldn't be expected to win many games. He should get all the credit in the world for carrying this team to the playoffs and he was the clear-cut best player in the world, even though he lost the MVP to Steve Nash. It remains one of the most controversial MVP winners of all time. Number 7. We have Michael Jordan in 1987. In my opinion, this is the greatest scoring season by any player not named Will Chamberlain. Here are the numbers he put up. He averaged a career-high 37.1 points per game on 48.2% shooting, 5.2 rebounds per game, 4.6 assists per game, 2.9 steals per game, and 1.5 blocks per game. He became one of two players to score over 3,000 points for a season. Will Chamberlain is the only other player to do so. He also produced the sixth highest points per game average for a single season and is the highest mark since the NBA slash ABA merger. There were eight total games where he scored over 50 points, including two games where he scored over 60 points. In one of those games, he had the stat line of 61 points and 10 rebounds. And if we're talking about the number of games he scored over 40 points, he had 37 such games. That's nearly half of the games he played. And just like it was in the case of James Harden and Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan had to score this many points for the Bulls to have a shot at making the playoffs. Charles Oakley and John Paxson were the only players that averaged over 10 points for a season, and no one else other than MJ averaged over 15 points per game. That resulted in the Bulls finishing with a 40-42 and record, and there's no way that they would have awarded a player with the MVP after finishing the season with a losing record. Especially with Magic Johnson having the best year of his career, and with the Lakers ending up with their greatest season in franchise history. The right player won the MVP, but MJ was starting his trajectory as the greatest player of all time. Number 6. We have David Robinson in 1994. This is probably the most underrated season in modern day history. Here are the numbers he put up. He averaged 29.8 points per game on 50.7% shooting, 10.7 rebounds per game, 4.8 assists per game, and 3.3 blocks per game. He led the league in scoring as well. This was a year where he scored 71 points, where he had the ultra-rare quadruple-double, and where he had the rare stat line of 43 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 blocks. The unconventional 40-point triple-double. Here are the facts. From a statistical standpoint, his 1993-94 season is one of the greatest seasons of all time. He had a 20.0 win shares, which is the 15th highest mark since the shot clock was implemented. He's one of six players, including Wilt, Kareem, Jordan, LeBron, and Oscar Robertson, to have posted a 20.0 win shares or higher for a single season. He had a Valley of Replacement Player rating of 11.36 which is currently the fourth highest mark for a single season. Only Michael Jordan and LeBron James have produced a rating of at least 11.0 or higher. And he had an 11.87 box plus minus, which is currently the sixth highest mark for a single season. He should have been the most valuable player in the league that season. It doesn't matter that he got bounced in the first round. That is a regular season award and there was not a single player in the league that had a better year than David Robinson. In hindsight, I understand that the league was not using the advanced metrics that we have at our disposal, 
and Hakeem also had a great season. Up to that point, he never won an MVP award, and it's only right that a player of his caliber won the award at least once. But with everything that we know now, we can appreciate a lot more so just how dominant David Robinson was in his prime. Number 5. We have Will Chamberlain in 1964. This was a season where he made a conscious effort to take fewer shots and to get his teammates more involved. He averaged nearly 8 fewer shot attempts per game than the previous season, and he averaged 5 assists per game. That also includes leading the league in scoring with 36.9 points per game on 52.4% shooting and pulling down 22.3 rebounds per game. From an analytical standpoint, he posted the second highest win shares total and the third highest win shares per 48 minutes total for a single season. Both were also career highs for him. Understandably, these numbers did not exist at the time but it helps us judge this particular season and to give its proper place now. As the numbers indicate, Will Chamberlain meant so much to his team, and they would have been the worst team in the league without him. This was a team that did not have a respectable second scoring option, and Will still had to take nearly 30 shots a game for the Warriors to get by. That allowed Will to have yet another legendary scoring season, and he had 9 total games where he scored over 50 points. To give an idea of how the league viewed Will Chamberlain and the Warriors that season, check out what Sports Illustrator wrote in 1964. This season, there was a new wilt. The Warriors won their early game with the Hawks, mostly because Chamberlain was doing workaday things. He passed to his no longer stationary teammates when they were clear. He raced back down court in order to block shots, and he gathered up rebounds on both backboards. Furthermore, Chamberlain has been playing this way for four months now. He is, to be precise, scoring less and having the time of his life. So are the Warriors, a team that lists on his roster some of the slowest players and worst shooters ever to play in the NBA. With just 14 games remaining in the regular season, San Francisco, and next to last place this time last year, and until recently, the obvious choice to finish there again is in first place, ahead of the St. Louis Hawks and the defending Western Division champions, the Los Angeles Lakers." End of quote. Let's be honest, Will Chamberlain met every criteria for winning the MVP award that season. He was the best player in the league, and he adjusted his style of play, which contributed to a 17-game turnaround from the previous season. But the players of the league still weren't convinced. They gave the award to Oscar Robertson who in all fairness also had an incredible season. He was only 7 assists away from averaging a triple double for the season and he also averaged 31.4 points per game. The Cincinnati Royals were not exactly a team loaded with talent, but he led them to the second best record in the league, so I kinda see why they gave it to him. But because Wilt lost the MVP award, he ended up having one of the most underrated and the most forgotten all-time great season. Number 4. We have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 1973. I talked about this particular atrocity in a previous video. There was just no excuse for not awarding Kareem with the MVP. Here are the numbers he posted. He averaged 30.4 points per game on 55.4% shooting, 16.1 rebounds per game, and 5 assists per game. He finished 2nd in points and 4th in rebounds. Do you know who was the last player to average at least 30 points and 15 rebounds in a season? It was Bob McAdoo in the following season. That's the list right there. And do you know how many players have averaged at least 30 points, 15 rebounds, and 5 assists in a season? Just one other player, and that was Elgin Baylor in 1961. So not only did he post all-time great numbers, but he also led the Milwaukee Bucks to 60 wins in the regular season. So I ask you, how was that not good enough to win the MVP? The player that won the award must have put up monster numbers. Yeah, no. Dave Cowens was awarded the MVP, and he averaged 20.5 points per game on 45.2% shooting, 16.2 rebounds per game, and 4.1 assists per game. The only reason 
why the league awarded the MVP to Cowens was that Kareem won the previous two awards and because the Celtics won 68 games that season. So they gave the award to the quote-unquote best player on the best team of the league instead of the consensus best player in the world at the time. There's no question that the league dropped the ball on this one. Before we get to the top three, there is a special gift that I have for all NBA fans. I have a new book that is available titled The All-Time Greatest NBA Book, counting down the 50 greatest teams, playoff runs by a player, playoff moments, and the 100 greatest players. There are also additional chapters where I do a 16 bracket to determine the greatest team of all time. And at the end of the book, there's a fun discussion about which player should be selected in a winner-take-all game to save the world from extinction. That chapter is influenced by the Avengers Endgame movie. It's available in ebook and paperback. I have the link in the description box for you to get your copy today. It's currently available exclusively on Amazon. Now on to the video. Number 3 we have Michael Jordan in 1989. Michael Jordan in the 80s is my favorite version of him. He was just so entertaining to watch. And the numbers that he was able to put up during this decade were monstrous. And for this season, he was able to put up the greatest all-around numbers of his career. He averaged 32.5 points per game on 53.8% shooting, 8 rebounds per game, 8 assists per game, and 2.9 steals per game. He posted a career high in rebounds and assists. Do you know how many players have been able to match or surpass those numbers in NBA history? The answer is none. No one has been able to average at least 32 8 and 8 in NBA history. Here are some other crazy numbers that Jordan was able to produce. He was able to post seven straight triple doubles in the month of March. Only Will Chamberlain and Russell Westbrook were able to surpass that streak. That included two straight games where he posted a 40-point triple-double. For the last 20 games of the season, he averaged an impressive 31.5 points per game, 10.4 assists per game, and 9.4 rebounds per game. When it was all said and done, he said this to the LA Times, quote, if the way I'm playing now doesn't convince them I'm a complete player, then I guess nothing will. End of quote. Too many people forget what Jordan was capable of doing while being the team's full-time point guard. Aside from his legendary all-around performance, he also had five games where he scored over 50 points, and he also was able to post the third highest Valley or replacement player rating for a single season in league history. We're talking about one of the greatest seasons ever, but the league decided to give the MVP to Magic Johnson. So why did the league decide to snub Jordan? My best guess is because Magic Johnson basically duplicated his legendary 1987 season and posted a 22, 12-8 averages. And the Lakers had the second best record in the league and 10 more wins than the Bulls had. It was a great season by Magic, but it wasn't at the level that Michael Jordan was. Number two, we have Oscar Robertson in 1962. For this season, Oscar Robinson became the standard for all-around excellence. Someone that did it all on the court and excelled at distributing and scoring the ball at a high level. This was the first time that a player averaged a triple-double for a season, and he was the only player to accomplish this feat for a good 55 years. Here are the numbers that he put up. He averaged 30.8 points per game on 47.8% shooting, 12.5 rebounds per game, and 11.4 assists per game. Robertson also set a then NBA record for the most triple doubles during the regular season with 41 triple doubles. Some of his noteworthy games from that season included four total games where he posted a 40 point triple double. There was also another game where he scored a season high 49 points and pulled down 22 rebounds. It's one of the most legendary seasons in the history of the game. And before Russell Westbrook showed up, we looked at those numbers with awe. It was an accomplishment that was only linked to him. This isn't the only reason why he is widely considered as one of the greatest players of all time, but it's most certainly the first thing we think of 
when talking about the Big O. As great as that season was, there was no chance that he was going to win the MVP. The next spot was his competition. And number one, it will forever be Wilt Chamberlain in 1962. He averaged 50.4 points per game on 50.6% shooting, 25.7 rebounds per game, and he averaged 48.5 minutes per game for the season. We're talking about the greatest statistical season in the history of the league, and he didn't win the MVP award. How crazy is that? This was a season where he infamously scored 100 points in a game. This was also the season where he scored 78 points, the third highest scoring mark in history, and he pulled down 43 rebounds in the same game. There were 45 games where he scored over 50 points, including 15 total games where he scored over 60 points. There was a seven game stretch where he scored 50 points or more. There was also a 14 game stretch where he scored 40 points or more. He did that two different times during the season. The numbers are simply mind-boggling, but he lost the MVP award to Bill Russell. If the Celtics would have gone undefeated for the season, then maybe I can see why they give him the award. But there is no reasonable explanation that any basketball historian can give to defend this atrocity of a decision. Will Chamberlain was not voted by his peers to win the award. And we can't give the lame excuse that the Celtics had the best record in the league and they were the first team to ever win 60 games in a season. Big woof. The Warriors had the third best record in the league and that should have been more than enough. But Wilt was not rewarded for having the greatest season by any professional athlete ever. What a shame. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. Till next time.